Hello and welcome to the print. Uh, uh, we're here with a very special guest, a person uh, who is currently in charge or has in his hands uh, the keys to the very important caste census uh, in Karnataka. Uh, uh, we have with us Mr. Jay Prakash Hegde, a senior politician and the chairman of the Backward Classes Commission. Uh, so let's find out more from him on why there is a delay in the release of the findings of this caste census. Sir, thank you so much for speaking to us. Sir. My pleasure. Uh, so, why is there a delay in the release of the caste census? In fact, uh, there is no uh, delay as such. Uh, the data was collected by the uh, then commission. Uh, it was collected by deputy commissioner and his uh, revenue officials as well as the teachers. They were trained and then sent door to door to collect the house uh, details of every household, including the numbers, caste uh, details are also there, and the number of uh, people in that family. The, so the, after that, they completed the completed writing report uh, by, uh, I think, 2017. In fact, they wanted to give it to then uh, government. Uh, what I'm given to understand is they did not uh, receive it. I don't know the details, but uh, subsequently when we came to this commission, I was appointed as chairman in 2020, along with other five other members. So we s wrote a letter to the government. Uh, that's uh, Mr. Edirop was the chief minister of the, mm -hmm. the state. Uh, saying uh, uh, there are some technical difficulty because the member secretary had not signed. We did not receive any reply. Um, then again, we wrote one more letter. Uh, we did not receive any reply. After this government, government coming to power, we wrote one more letter saying these are the problems we are having. What is to be done? We received a letter from the government saying, uh, Using the uh, same data, which was collected in 2014-15, you write a separate report and send it to the government. See, in the Act, it says uh, data to be collected and uh, report is to be sent, that is suggestions to the government, uh, may, uh, including the classification of the cars, because it was done in 2020, mm. uh, 2002. Uh, thereafter, the, the Act says every 10 years it has to be done. Now it's almost uh, 20 years. So we are uh, writing the report and uh, maybe we were to give it, uh, uh, we were supposed to give it today because today is the last day for us. But government gave us two more months, reappointed us for uh, writing, complete uh, to complete the report and send it to the government. So, I mean, today, like you said, today was your last day, but you've been and, given and a... Re been first day. <laughs> last yeah. day. <laughs> yeah. So, so, what happens in the next two months? So, you think it will be complete by... Yeah, we have already completed a major portion of the work. Now, we have to write the report and give it to the government. So, there is also some that, you know, you, you spoke about the member secretary, but there's also some allegations from the BJP uh, legislators to say that, you know, uh, the original copy of this particular s report has been lost. No, whatever uh, records uh, the previous commission gave to us, it is with us and the data is intact. In this, uh, we have the software as well as the hard, hard copy. Uh, in fact, there are two things in this. One is data and another is report on the writing on the basis of the data. So data is uh, completely safe, nobody can question about it. So the, we are now discussing about the report given by the written by the previous commission. In that uh, report, member secretary has not signed. So we request, uh, we ask the government what to do. They have uh, written to us to uh, write a new report. We are doing it. So, I mean, these... Uh, there, there, should not, there should not be any confusion regarding data as well as uh, the report. Data uh, was collected in the, in the hard copy. Uh, we have uh, we, what we have got. It, chairman, members, as well as the member secretary, they have signed. It is authenticated. 
So the act says, what the act says is, every report shall be authenticated by the member secretary. So the data is authenticated by the member secretary. There is no question, nobody can question about it. And even this commission can change it. Okay. So uh, these demands by, you know, various bodies, let's say like the uh, Lingayat uh, community as well as Vokaliga communities and several others, asking for a, you know, for a more scientific way to do this caste census. Uh, for starters, was this caste census in your view done in a very scientific manner and does it require a relook or, you know, completely redo? There's no need to redo the thing because it's done scientifically. And it's uh, signed by all the chairman and members and the member secretary. Uh, there's no question that anybody has stamped it. The, the doubt what they have is about the report. They are thinking data is uh, missing. No, data is very safe. Even the report what uh, the then commission wrote, it, we have the hard copy. The question is whether the member secretary is signed or not. Member secretary is not signed in there. That's the only question. The act says every uh, report shall be authenticated by the member secretary. Now that uh, we have to redo the whole thing and get the signature of the member secretary, we are all working together. So uh, automatically he'll sign. That's what it is. So, uh, sir, in a sense, uh, is, uh, you know, uh, the existing numbers that, you know, is believed to be that of, you know, the number of, the proportion of population of Lingayats and Vokaligas. How did they come about this number? Because the last caste census, I think, was held sometime in 1931. 31. 31. So, how did they come about this number that they're 17 or 14 percent? Or how did they even come about this number, sir? I don't know, because uh, nobody has uh, seen the data and the report as, uh, as such. So, the discussion has started even before we submit, uh, before it's being submitted to the government. Unless we submit it to the government and government goes through it and brings it to public uh, domain, I don't know how it came for discussion. I think uh, they should allow it to be uh, submitted to the government, then after that they should uh, start discussion on that. But if the, you know, if as demands demanded uh, to redo this entire exercise, what would it take to redo this entire exercise? And how much is the earlier exercise cost? No, we are not spending any money on that. Okay. No, whatever is spent, it is spent for uh, majority of the money is spent for uh, uh, collection of data. If this is we are sitting in the office and giving indicators, weightage and other things and we are writing the report. There's absolutely no expenditure uh, so far as this part is concerned. So what, when you do submit the report and you know, what is this data going to be eventually used for, sir? It can be used for uh, uh, reclassification of the car, uh, reservation list, uh, reservation list, as well as the government can take, uh, make use of this for uh, giving benefits to the uh, poor people. Government is giving a lot of uh, benefits to public. They, they can find out who is below poverty line, who is above poverty line, who is entitled for a house, if, whether he has already got a house or not. Every detail, every detail of the household is there in that uh, uh, data. So, I mean, uh, when do you reckon this, this report will be finally be out for, you know, for the public to see as well, sir? Government has given us two more months time. I think we should be doing it much more earlier than that. Uh, and, uh, you know, has the government spoken to you any time about uh, how they want to go about it? Any directions from the government to you all at all? No, they have not interfered in our work. So now that you've been reappointed till January 31st, uh, the report should be with the government by then, sir? Sure. Much earlier, I said. We are going to submit it to government much earlier. But that's not to say that uh, the government will release that data without us. That's for the government. It's uh, Our duty is to prepare the report and along with the data, we have to submit it to the government. Uh, again, I'm repeating it. Data is different and report is different. Report, in that report, we are going giving only suggestions. So, the government, it's for the government to place it over the cab cabinet and take decision. 
So, do you also think that uh, some of this data can be used, uh, you know, in any manner to benefit a party in the upcoming Lok Sabha elections? Will it have any impact on the? I don't think the it can be made because I don't think on the basis of cast only every voter is going to cast his vote. Depends. Sometimes depends on the party. That uh, sometimes depends on personal equations. Maybe some uh, depends. On the, if the leader is good, they'll cast vote for him, irrespective of the caste. So it depends uh, on the individual voter. So apart from being the backward classes chairman, of course, you're also a very very senior politician. So I want to understand from you what role does caste play in, let's say, politics in in Karnataka? Sir? Sometimes it plays, uh, caste role plays, but. Not hundred percent. As I said, it depends on the individuals. All right. Thank you so much for talking to us, sir. My pleasure.